Hi guys and welcome to this 2015 Charger softball season preview. My name is Kat Torres and today I am joined by Hillsdale College head softball coach Joe Abram. Today we're going to look ahead at the upcoming season. Coach, welcome. Thanks, Kat. Okay, so the team ended last season on a really great roll, winning nine of its last ten games. So what elements went into that streak and how do you hope to, to carry those things over into this new season? We had a fairly young team and it was just a matter of when that team was going to bust down. And right about midway through the season, the team did bust down and I guess kind of realized just how good it could be. So Coach Porter and I, we, we figured that was coming at some point during the season. And it's, it's a very thin line. It's not as if we were getting buried in, in the games before that or we won the games in the second half of the season you know, by five to ten runs. But when you cross that real thin line, all of a sudden you turn a team that's winning one out of every three games into a team that wins two out of every three games and you have a whole different team. Mm -hmm. Would you say it was a change in mentality for the girls or what was it that was that driving factor, do you think? Um, I don't think it was a change of mentality that, that turned it around, but once you start getting it turned around, mm -hmm. you have a change of mentality and that a team, especially in this sport, starts to know that it can win and starts to know that, wait a second, we're, we're not just as good as a lot of these teams, we're better than a lot of them. Mm -hmm. And so the expectation of winning, that changes a team's mentality, and that's what we had toward the end of the year. Okay, so between your fall season and your spring workouts, what have you identified as the team's biggest strengths and weaknesses? Uh, our, we have four pitchers, and those pitchers look very good. We were just talking about that yesterday. Those four pitchers look very good, so we think that the pitching is going to be a strength for us. Um, we last year we had a good. We were our pitching staff was good. This year we return all three of our pitchers that we had last year. Plus we have a freshman Danielle Stein who's very good. So we're really confident about our pitching. Okay. Um, the uh, ha probably with any team it's February right now as we talk, and our hitting is a little off. But th that's typical at this time of the year. Uh, well, we're confident we have probably the best hitting team that we've had in my four years here at Hillsdale. And defensively, we had a good year last year, and we returned just about everybody, so what we expect to be good defensively, it, uh, it, this is a promising year for us. It, uh, and I don't shy away from telling people when they ask <laughs> me, we expect to be really good this year. Okay, awesome. Okay, so can you tell us about the team's freshman class and how you hope to see them contribute to this team this season? Sure, well, since I just mentioned Danielle Stein, mm -hmm. Danielle's a pitcher from Cincinnati, and uh, she um, had a real good fall for us. We, we played some games in the fall, and she shut down a, pretty, a couple of pretty good teams. And uh, she's a hard thrower, nice rise ball, and she has the type of stuff where she can be a dominant pitcher in this league. So, and Danielle also happens to be a very good hitter, hits the ball really hard, and, and we don't know for sure yet, but could be a hitter that's in the middle of our lineup. Um, we have five freshmen total. Another one, Brittany Mahan, is our second girl from Long Island, New York. We have also have a sophomore from Long Island, which goes back to the 70s. Hillsdale has a Long Island connection. And we were able to take advantage of that and have a couple of Long Island girls here. But uh, Brittany is a utility player. She can play infield. She can play outfield. She's even, even helping us out at catching during our winter pitching sessions, which has been great. Uh, Brittany's a very good natural hitter, kind of a gap, doubles type hitter, and uh, just goes all out. She, we, we stuck her in the outfield in the fall. Next thing we know, she's making diving catches, running into the wall making catches. She's just that type of player who will just go all out at all, go all out all the time. Uh, three other freshmen, Jessica Taylor is a shortstop from the uh, Goodrich, Michigan, Flint area, and is just a really good, real nice swing. Good solid shortstop, just a good all-around player. Gave, came from good program finesse, and uh, she's just uh, mechanically solid, smart player. And my type of player. If you, if uh, softball people understand my type of player, Jessica is probably it. Mm -hmm. So she's probably going to help us out immediately this year. Um, Haley Lawrence is also from the Detroit area, and uh, another girl that can play infield and outfield. But we have her in the outfield. Very good speed. Good power, very good all-around athlete uh, who uh, had a really good fall, and she's certainly in the mix for a lot of playing time this year. And then we have um, our final freshman, Kelsey Gockman, from uh, Downers Grove, Illinois, Chicago area, 
and Kelsey's hit the ball really well in the falls, hit the ball well this winter. She's a catcher, also plays third base and can play any, any number of positions. Kelsey, like I said, has a lot of power and uh, has just shown herself to potentially be a really solid bat in our lineup. So but we're really pleased with the fresh, freshman class. Okay, it's exciting to see how they're going to do then. Okay, so who are some of the top veterans that you have on the team and how have they improved from last season? Um, gosh, we have so many. We, we have 17 girls on the team. So other than the freshmen, we have a dozen girls. And uh, this is easy for me to say, but it's really true. They're all in the mix for playing time. We haven't had that in, here until this year. Mm -hmm. We've always had we've always had several, maybe or at least a few girls that were, were going to be backup players. Um, but that's not quite the case anymore. So out of the out of the returning players, just starting with the seniors, uh, Kate Ardry had had a whale of a seat. She's a um, had a whale of a season last year. Second baseman and pitcher, and uh, she hits the ball really hard. Doubles type hitter, uh, excellent second baseman with good range. She'll probably bat somewhere in the top or middle of our order, and um, she's her uh, bat is looking really good. She's looking good pitching, so I, I think she's due for a big season. And uh, the other two seniors, Melissa Felke, was our main starter at first base last year. Hit, hit 300. She's coming off of a torn meniscus injury. She just returned to practice this week, and her bat looks good so far. Then finally, Jessica Day, so somebody who was injured for probably most of last year. Um, she gotten she slid into a base at Wayne State. Hurt her leg pretty bad. She came back toward the end of the year. She had a really good fall. And she's looked really good offensively indoors so far when we do what we call our live simulated games. Jessica's a fast slapper, bunner type player and um, has looked really good. Then down into our junior, Sarah Grunert had a fantastic season, both pitching and hitting last year. Um, she's almost automatically somebody who's going to bat somewhere in the top of our order. And uh, her pitching really caught fire in the second half of last year. She was just shutting one team after another down. So we expect another great year from here, from her. Also, Danielle Garceau, um, junior from Green Bay, was our number one catcher last year. And uh, we, we expect her to return as the number one catcher. Uh, but we, we still will use Cassie Asselt and Kelsey Gockman quite a bit behind the plate. But uh, Danielle's just a fantastic defensive player. Also, a really good third baseman. Um, it's. We don't have that many girls. It's hard for me not to mention all of them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so Sarah Klopfer is another junior pitcher who uh, mixes uh, really good control with nice off speed, nice junk, and um, she's shown a good bat too. She hasn't hit. She hasn't literally had too many at bats for us the last couple of years, but she's shown to have a really good bat this fall and winter. So we're excited to see what she can do at the plate with more at bats. And um, we have uh, Julia Costco, who has worked probably, as far as I know, worked harder than anybody else on the team over last summer and in, in, in this fall with her hitting. She hasn't been satisfied with how well she's been hitting the last couple of years, and she had a great fall. She looks good this winter, so we look for her to really bust down at the plate this year. Mm -hmm. And uh, Julia plays third base and shortstop and started probably over half of our games last year. Um, and then Ainsley Ellison, who's been a starting outfielder for us for the last two years, um, she'll, her offense is enough that we either lead her off or bat her somewhere around sixth, and she's looked also excellent um, offensively this fall and this winter while improving her defense. Then we moved down, we have four sophomores. Rebecca Casting was our starting center fielder last year and will be again this year. Uh, fantastic left-handed bat, very good center fielder. And she had a good year last year as a freshman, and we're expecting her to bump that up a whole notch this, this spring, and she's expecting that out of herself. Um, Jesse Fox is a sophomore outfielder from Chelsea, Michigan. Really fast, stole a ton of bases. And her, her bat, she's a slapper bunner. She's improved quite a bit, so we're anxious to see what she can do with more at bats. Kelly Eady from Grandview, Michigan, another solid outfielder, just a good all around player, somebody who's working hard on her hitting. She got moderate playing time last year. And She's working to bump that up. So we have a ton of competition in the outfield. Then who I mentioned earlier, Cassie Aselta, who's our sophomore from Long Island, New York, catcher. She got off to a rocky start last year. She was one of the reasons why we were able to turn it around. Her bat started coming around, her catching got better, and, and she's also looked good this winter. We've, <coughs> we've 
Yeah, any coach could say this, but we've looked good this fall and winter, mm -hmm. so we're hoping to just maintain that. Okay. So um, what do you see as the biggest challenges and um, some of the goals that you have for the team facing um, earlier in the season um, and also before the GLIAC tournament? Well, the uh, <coughs> overall the biggest challenge for the team this year is believing and playing like we're the team that finished off last year. Yeah, even I think we finished something like 15 and three last year in the last 18 games. Nonetheless, in the league, that got us to a 13 and 13 record, 21 and 17 overall. So we slight we were you know, roughly a 500 team, and our team still needs to believe that we're a team that should be in the top few teams in the GLIAC. And I'm hoping we're there, but it's hard to say you're there until it actually happens. Mm -hmm. I believe that we are. I think we have uh, the talent to be any, anywhere from first to fourth in the league. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying we're going to win the league, but I think it's a possibility. Our girls need to believe that. And for, the, for everybody to truly buy in, it needs to happen on the field. Okay. Um, not, not just it's, it's more than confidence. It's, uh, I, I guess it's confidence, but when you step out onto the field, you, some teams just explode, well, of course we're going to win. Um, and other teams, well, we've lost for so many years, we're probably going to lose, but we'll play the game mm -hmm. and see what happens. So yeah, it's confidence, but it's, it's confidence plus. Mm -hmm. It's just an expectation. We're close to getting there. We need to get over that hump to where if we lose to anybody, I don't care who it is, Wayne State, Grand Valley, whoever, we're not happy about it. And we're in the mode that, oh my God, I can't believe we lost. Mm -hmm. We need to get to that point, but we're close. So that that's our biggest challenge. Um, then the other thing is, since we finished so well last year, we can't get overconfident in the sense that we go out there and we think that we don't have to put the work in now, we don't have to focus hard in games to, to just beat teams. Because because this whole league, from first place to from the top team to the 14th team, it's close enough where anybody can beat anybody in a given game. So we need to respect all of our opponents, and uh, it, it's a grind. We'll play you know, roughly 50 games. It's tough to be up, so to speak, for every game. So that's a challenge, too. Okay, so with that tough competition, tight competition, um, going into the season, what do you expect the team's toughest team to beat is going to be? Uh, the uh, GLIAC, uh, the, predict, the coach's predictions for the GLIAC, we did that about a week or two ago, but I, haven't, I don't think it's out yet. But it's a pretty good bet that Wayne State was probably picked to win the league. Uh, they won the conference tournament last year. They went to the final three in the nation. They have their two pitchers back and most of their starters. So common sense would indicate that Wayne State's the favorite. Uh, but the um, you know, trying to look at it, everybody, it's hard for me to say who's the biggest because every single team in the league can beat us and vice versa. And it's literally true. Mm -hmm. uh, but I would guess the coaches probably predicted after Wayne State something like Ohio Dominican, Grand Valley, Saginaw, maybe Ashland. I would guess those in some order would be the top five. And they were probably picked, I would guess, seventh, eighth, ninth. Um, I think we're better than that, but mm -hmm. we have to prove it on the field. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, Coach, thank you so much for coming out and taking the time with us today, and we wish you the best of luck on your new season. Thanks, Kat. Coming up. And um, thank you for watching this 2015 Chargers softball preview.